This is Twit. So um, there was a bit of nice news, which is that uh, Skype, Microsoft, of course, now owns Skype. And I was a little nervous, Leo, when I turned my Skype machine on this morning because you never uh, know, do you? <laughs> you never know, and it would really mess up my Tuesday and yours. Uh, because this time I got the the uh, for no reason that I could tell the big, you know, uh, dark screen UAC like click this to approve changes, and I went like what? Like just turning the machine on, which I've never seen before, just turning the machine on. Yeah. And so I, I looked at it closely and it said Microsoft, Skype, and I'm like, oh no, no, please. No. So, I mean, what could I do? I just I said I gulped and I said, Okay. And it kind of rummaged around for a while and made a lot of noise and then everything settled down and here I am. So, you know, once again. <laughs> However, what they announced uh last week was their support, which had been announced at the beginning of the year. Uh, the, and at the beginning of the year, they announced their relationship with uh, Open Whisper Systems in a, uh, in, in fact, I have a, a link in the blog, I mean, a, a link in the show notes to the Signal.org blog about the Skype partnership with Signal. And, you know, this surprised people at the time because it was like, wow, really? Microsoft's going to give ad encrypt like end-to-end -end encryption to Skype. And it must be that it's because everybody else has. You know, WhatsApp now supports Signal. Google does. Facebook does. Uh, there's even Signal now on, on uh you know, of apps in our various mobile devices and a desktop version. So anyway, the good news is if you in Skype, you click on the chat plus button. And I did yesterday because I was like, oh, really? Uh, the third item in the menu is start private conversation. And this this allows you to, as you would expect now, that Skype supports so-called private conversations, um, although Microsoft apparently didn't really announce it. It got noticed like in the wild that it was now there. Um, it is the signal protocol and um, uh, which Skype now supports. In Android, this uh, the Skype private conversations appeared at the beginning of the month on August 2nd. Uh, for Android, as, as I mentioned, at, in 8.15.0.306. And Windows Skype received it just at some point in the last few days, uh, 8.28.0.41. And when I looked, I think I was like 0.6 something. Uh, so I missed a few incrementals. But <laughs> whatever it was that I clicked on this morning when I fired up my Skype machine, who knows where I am today. But... It is present. Um, and I'll just say that I'm always a little uncomfortable when explicit key management is taken away from the user and is performed by the system. I mean, it is, I think it is a rational trade off given that no typical user wants to be bothered with key management. You know, we've talked about how. Uh, Apple's iMessage system is cryptographically strong, but it's inherently supports multi-way messaging, and the user is un is not managing the keys for the recipients to the chat themselves, which which does allow Apple, if they were compelled to, to insert a key for an additional party that would then be participating silently in messaging. So, so the, you know, that's the, I mean, again, is it a, an absolute problem? Well, it's a theoretical problem, but in reality, you know, I mean, like staying a little bit grounded, it's so trivial, as we know, to capture the keystrokes before or after the encryption, that is like, outside of the encrypted channel that, you know, the, what anybody using these systems should 
consider is that what they're providing is really, really strong proof against a network located attacker. That is, when we began talking about the, the, the really when all of the issue for privacy ramped up was the Snowden revelations and the idea that the NSA had big data sucking node taps all over the internet and it was you know funneling virtually all of the traffic off to some farm somewhere for for, for permanent storage so the so that's where you know the the real awareness of the need for https began to happen and then we learned even that's not safe because of the lack of perfect forward secrecy that allows a key that is subsequently revealed to be used to go back and decrypt what the NSA had been storing all these years. So now we're getting better about that. But in the case of Signal, we have a really robust on the wire system that protects against that. But users should remember that the protection is not absolute. That, you know, as we talked about with Android last week, we sort of pounded on Android a bit with all of the various, the man in the disk attack and and such, where it is, you know, still very possible for the end point to be exploited. The, you know, crypto technology, we got that nailed now. There, We can do bulletproof crypto, but, but the NSA and law enforcement and other agencies realize, well, fine. Let them encrypt as it goes from point to point. We can still stick a tap in outside of that encrypted tunnel. So, uh, so, so somebody who's really interested in 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 seriously having untappable communications needs to think about having a dedicated device where they they re they rigorously refrain from any other use of a dedicated device except that you know i would get a, a you know I, I would get an iphone with a known history maybe brand new and and just not use it for anything else you know install and what, signal and would you use signal you wouldn't use apple messages obviously yes i would use signal i i think you know exactly because the the signal if you use the signal app from signal then that's that's as good as you're going to get they're taking advantage of the security in iOS you again you don't want to just like resist all temptation you know you know i mean it would be your secure com platform if you really absolutely care about security um, because as far as we know uh, you know, Signal is open source. It's open protocol, thoroughly vetted. Uh, it's getting, it's really been scrutinized. And so, you want to put it on a platform that isn't, that that hasn't been contaminated. I noted that Signal is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And um, right now, there's also a there, Chrome it, extension you can use, which is nice. Yeah, I think exactly. Although, where where I'm headed with this is that. At some point, it will become part of the Linux distro. Uh, it's probably not quite yet. I can't. It's hosted on something that's a little worrisome, um, which made makes it only available for two of the different types of Linuxes. But my point is, once it became bound into the turnkey distro, you could you could create a bootable CD. Um, and that would be a, a very strong security way of doing messaging if you needed to, you know, to boot a CD that uh, boot a CD that you trusted on a machine that you had some reason to believe. I mean, there, as we know, there are even ways to infect the boot process if somebody was, you know, really, <laughs> really being targeted. But but that would be a, a way of getting a clean OS boot that that already had secure, a really state-of-the-art secure messaging technology built right into it. So I can't think of any real practical way of being more more uh, safe and secure than that. And, uh, you know, it's got to be safe enough. 